Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and welcome to the seventh Q&A session. And if you notice right away, you notice that I'm not in my regular office. And the reason for that is that my LG split air condition broke about five days ago. And from five days, I'm trying to catch LG guys. I've called up their service center. Every day they say that somebody is going to come and fix it and nobody does that. And the problem with my uh, office room is that it's a soundproof room. So there is no air circulation in that. And without the AC, you can't even sit in the room for about five minutes. So I'm using this temporary room and I want to uh, straight away ap apologize that the audio quality might not be good because this is not a soundproof room. So please bear with the same because I wanted to do this Q&A session because of quite a few of you are waiting for the same. And the first question comes from Abhim Seven, and he asked us, what is the meaning of DVD web? I have uh, seen it written with the movie names when I downloaded any movie from the torrent. And how ripping a DVD can be done? The thing is that uh, DVD rip means that, let's say you bought a uh, movie DVD and now you want to convert it to a digital format like an AVI or DivX. You have specialized software that can do that. But uh, again, uh, I would say that as you have mentioned, you're downloading this stuff from torrents, it's illegal to do the same. You get a variety of uh, third party softwares that can convert the video from the DVD to your digital format and that's known as DVD repair. Again, uh, just note that it is not legal to rip DVDs based upon your geographical uh, location. I would say it is okay if you own the DVD and you're just making a digital copy for backups. But else, if you're trying to distribute this copy, that it's illegal. The next question comes from Wow1808 and he asks us, what is safe mode? Safe mode with networking and safe mode with command prompt. The thing is that with Windows, let's say your Windows has stopped working and it's crashing a lot. To diagnose what is the problem, you can go by booting you can go into the safe mode and what safe mode basically does is it disables all the extra drivers so that your windows will boot and you can fix the problem again as uh, mentioned safe mode with networking will enable the networking part also so that you can diagnose what problem is there for example you might have installed some wrong driver or some software so you can fix the same the next question comes from Siddharth Prime and he asks us, is there any difference between 1080i and 1080p videos or are they the same? No, the thing is that if when you see the 1080i that means it's an interlaced video and when it's 1080p that means it's a progressive video. And anyway the 1080p feed will be better than 1080i because with the 1080p video you get all the 1080 lines and in the interlaced it's actually half. For, so for example, when you are watching a lot of action movies or something, a 1080p video will be a lot smoother. But again, 1080p videos will be a lot larger in size than 1080i. The next question comes from John Smith 230 and he asks us, Hey Ranjit, can you tell me, uh, is there a visual difference when using an AMD or an NVIDIA? Because NVIDIA has physics and CUDA, uh, uh, while the AMD has steam processor. Uh, again, no, while, uh, uh, while loading most of the games, you won't find any difference. Where this CUDA and physics come into picture is, basically I'm talking about CUDA, some of the specialized softwares can use CUDA to accelerate it, apart from the GPU. So again, it depends upon the software, and only a handful of softwares can take advantage of the same. But for gaming, mostly you won't find any visual difference between an NVIDIA GPU or an AMD GPU. And the next question comes from D. Uh, Raghu and he asks us, Hi Ranjit, I'm planning to buy a tablet. I have an iPhone 4, so I'm used to iOS. I decided to go for iPad 3, but I recently saw a video of Sony Tablet S, which is an Android tablet. Now I'm confused with these two. Could you suggest me the better one in terms of all aspects? A tablet is expected to perform. Thanks Ranjit and cheers for the awesome videos. Thank you. And I would say that as you're already using an iOS platform, the advantage that uh, you'll have by going with the iPad 2 or iPad 3 is that uh, with Apple products, with just one uh, Apple account, you can use the same for about three or five devices if I'm not wrong. So uh, let's say you have purchased some apps for the iPhone 4, you can use them on the iPad 3. But now as you want to go with the Android tablet, I want to seriously suggest that you Check out the Android tablet, play around that with about 2 or 3 hours and see if you like the same. 
the Sony tablet, I have not personally used the same, but I like the design. It's a little bit different, but again, as you are already used to iOS, personally, I tend to go with the Android tablet because it offers me a lot more flexibility. And I also like the ability to play flash video within the browser. That is kind of important for me. So I would suggest that play around with any Android tablet for about two hours or so, then you'll get a good hang if you like the Android tablets or not. The next uh, question comes from Premier Rules and he says, what is RSS and RSS feed? Uh, secondly, if I subscribe to RSS feed from some website, how do I access them? RSS stands for really simple syndication and almost all of the sites are generally using this. And what it does is that let's say every day in the morning you browse these five sites. But now if you subscribe to the RSS feed, what you can do is you need not go individually to all these five sites. You can centrally access all that data in your RSS reader. And most of the email clients these days support RSS feed. Or you can also use the Google reader to subscribe to all these RSS feeds. So RSS is nothing but in a central location you are accessing all the relevant data that you want from all the sites. The next question comes from Hugh J. Bill and he asks us, please suggest a good cabinet between the, the uh, range of rupees 4000 to rupees 5000 that's approximately about 80 to 100 dollars shall i go for corsair h50 water cooling kit or the standard air cooling kit system for my computer because it runs 22 hours a day without an ac and the processor is i5 2500k uh, for the first question i would suggest that look at the cooler master series uh, you can get a very good cabinet for your price range Regarding water cooling, I would not suggest that because I have been personally using the i7-2600K and I have been using a, what do you say, air cooler. Uh, specifically, I am using this uh, Cooler Master Hyper 212 Plus and it has been performing great without any issues. So, I don't think so you will require water cooling unless you are doing very high overclocking. Because I have found with even this uh, air cooling, uh, I, the temperature difference I have seen with the stock cooler is about... 12 to 13 degrees so for your needs i think so air cooling would be more than enough the next question comes from mk burnfire and he asks i'm thinking to buy a phone after my exams i have two phones from which i am thinking to buy the htc explorer or the sony ericsson live with walkman i do not need high end but okay gaming i guess i also want to know the price of sony live with walkman the HTC Explorer is about rupees 10,000, but the Sony Walkman is how much? Please make a video review of the Sony Live with Walkman. Uh, yes, I have been getting quite a few requests for reviewing the Sony Live with Walkman, and I'm going to surely do it sometime next week. And currently, I think so. The price of this uh, Sony Live with Walkman is between 13,500 to 14,000, and this HTC Explorer I've seen it to go to around 9,500. Right now, I can't comment much about the Sony Live with Walkman because I haven't reviewed the same. So, if you would like to wait a while, I'll definitely try to review this phone by next week. Uh, the next question comes from iMath Shahins and he asks us, I'm a user of Galaxy Note, an assistant professor who uses smart board projector on everyday basis. My question is how to attach uh, my Galaxy Note to a projector using VGA cable? and how to attach it to a CRT regular TV with a micro USB cable with three jacks. The three jack is that means he's using a standard AV cable. The thing is that uh, with the Galaxy Note, uh, uh, you get a cable that's uh, the, from the micro USB to a HDMI cable and I've seen HDMI to DVI converters but frankly speaking, I haven't seen any HDMI to analog converters like uh, what do you say AV cable so I doubt you can connect it to a AV cable I might be wrong but if anybody uh, successful doing that please share your comments uh, below I'll appreciate the same VGA might be possible but I doubt you can use the standard you can connect it to a standard AV uh, uh, input like a standard television the next question comes from Sahil1105 and he asks I want to buy a dollar to 99 iPhone 4s from US locked to AT&T. Uh, I know it won't work in India unless it's unlocked. So I have talked to some vendors and they have assured me that they can unlock it. No problems with that. But my question is that if I buy it from the US, I have to sign a contract for which the people who buy this for me in the US will have to regularly pay. I don't want that to happen. What can I do to stay away from paying it? How do people usually use it? Sahil, I want to say that what you're trying to do is illegal. 
the reason the iPhone 4S is cheaper in the US is because it's subsidized by AT&T. And uh, don't think that you're getting it for a low price. The monthly payment that AT&T charges uh, will cover the cost of the iPhone 4S. So if you want to buy the iPhone 4S, just buy it from India. Don't do stuff like this because it's illegal. And again, I'm sorry, but I will not answer questions regarding piracy and doing stuff like this. The next uh, question comes from Raghav Goel 97. He asks us after your review of the TP-Link power line adapter, I inquired a local vendor about the adapter, but he told me that it is not successful in India due to power fluctuations and the company does not provide any warranty. If the product is burned due to power fluctuation, please tell me if there is an, any problem due to power fluctuation. Thanks for reading my questions and keep up the awesome videos. The thing is that Raghav Goel, uh, I've been testing this uh, TP-Link power line ethernet cable for now almost one month and I did not face any problems with the same. Luckily, I do not have a lot of power fluctuations uh, where I test the unit, but it's not uh, attached to any UPS or something like that. It's directly plugged into the socket. And in one month, in almost one month of my testing, I didn't have any issues. And I also uh, inquired with my local dealer, which I know him for about 15 years. And I've asked him about power line equipment and he told he have sold quite a bunch of you and this guy sells to corporate clients not ordinary clients and he he mentioned me that he had no issues with customers and all of those devices are working fine so i would say that they work fine but again i can't be really sure in the long term reliability because i just tested this unit for one month and it has been performing great and the next question comes from george jacob and he has uh, says hi Raji, thank you uh, very much for always answering my questions. I brought the Onkyo HD S3400 and the Osus RTN56 U router because I have trust in your reviews. Thank you. Uh, both are great products by the way. Uh, my previous uh, question was how do you back up data through NAS in two hard drives at the same time? You answered me by a dual bay NAS but sadly I have set up my NAS using a USB router Osus RTN56U. Uh, it has got two USB ports at the back. Is there any way I can set this up for dual HD backup or should I go and buy a proper NAS? The thing is that uh, uh, many of the consumer level routers from mid range to high, range, high end range offer a USB port at the back and you can easily connect a portable hard drive to the same. And by this way you can share whatever data is there on that hard drive throughout your network and some of them even have DLNA capability so that you can surf whatever media you have on your DLNA enabled device. But I want to make very sure that by doing this you are not making a NAS. A NAS is a lot more than that. A NAS has robust backup, security, user accounts uh, and to name a few. There are a lot of things that a NAS can do that simply by just plugging in your hard drive you can't do with a uh, router. For a proper NAS, I would suggest, seriously suggest to go for a proper NAS. Again, uh, for data redundancy, I would say a minimum of two bays is required. So go with a minimum of two bay NAS. But if you have a lot of data and, and your need, uh, ex, uh, storage needs are going to expand, you will look at four bay NAS. Again, I have tested a lot of NASes and I seriously uh, recommend NASes from Synology. Though the Synology NASes are a little bit expensive, but the software that's the distation software that comes with them is excellent and i would say it's one of the best uh, nas softwares that i have personally tested and the next question is i have a 500 gb seagate hard drive which carries all my data and also my windows os i've heard that taking away all your personal data off the drive uh, that carries the os speeds up the computer is it true yeah technically speaking if you let's say you have two physical hard drives you should load your operating system on the first drive and keep all the media etc on the second hard drive it will speed up the process a little bit better but i won't say it's a dramatical increase if you want to really speed up the performance i would strongly suggest that you go with the ssd and load your os uh, etc on the ssd and keep all your other data on the 500 GB hard drive. That way you'll get a significant boost. And the next question is also very similar. This is from OKA15 and he says, Hi again Ranjit, can you please tell me the difference between SSD and hard drives? Thank you for your time. I've, I'm just going to touch briefly because if I go in detail, it will become a very long video. Traditionally speaking, your normal hard drives are physical in nature. It has a platter and it has heads. So let's say you are accessing a file what happens is the media rotates and the head has to align 
where the data is there. So this all takes time. Whereas on a SSD, think of SSD is nothing but huge chunks of memory. So accessing data on a SSD is almost instantaneous because there is no physical media, there is no uh, head or something like that. So any day a SSD will be faster than a hard drive and a typical SSD will be about three to five times faster than a hard drive. Also uh, with SSDs you can boot your operating system very fast. A typical Windows computer can boot in about uh, 11 to 12 seconds with a good SSD compare that to a hard drive that can take about 35 seconds. So if you want speed SSD is the way to go but SSD is not the solution for everything because the capacity on the SSD is far lower compared to a normal hard drive. Uh, the next question comes from SBMCOS and he asks us uh, please suggest me a 4 pay NAS with either Wi-Fi or Gigabit Ethernet. The thing is that with Wi-Fi, I do not suggest connecting your uh, NAS to a Wi-Fi because the speed will be really slow. Uh, ideally, you should connect your NAS only to a Gigabit router and I would uh, strongly again suggest the Synology brand. You can get a bunch of uh, NASes from them and they have two or three models for the 4-bay NAS. So you can check this Synology.com website and go there and uh, check out the products they offer. The last question is from Techno Dictionary and he asks, I have been listening about the news about Intel IV bridge processor and I have also watched your videos about the same. Uh, but I wanted to ask, I am uh, going to build a new PC. Should I wait for the IV bridge or go with the second generation that is the Sandy Bridge uh, current uh, Core i processor? Also, what will be a new in this series? Will the speed uh, increase and how much uh, more will they cost? The thing is that the current crop of Core i processors that Intel is selling is known as the Sandy Bridge processor. The upcoming that is known as Ivy Bridge are soon going to launch. Uh, uh, actually uh, the release date is April 29th or something. So I would say that the desktop range will be available in May. So if you can wait for that much time, wait and get the Ivy Bridge. Uh, traditionally for a desktop computer, Ivy Bridge is not that important because uh, the raw CPU performance will increase only in the range of about 6 to 8 percent. But if you're planning to use the internal GP on the chip, then I would seriously suggest that you wait for Ivy Bridge because the internal GPU performance is approximately 50 to 60 percent more compared to the Sandy Bridge parts. Again, for desktops, I would say if you're using an external GPU, that's not important. But if you're going to purchase a laptop, I would seriously suggest that you wait for the IV bread chips because also IV bread chips will consume a lot less power, hence boosting up your battery life. I hope that answers your question. So these were the few questions for the seventh Q&A session. I hope you like them. Yeah, I will be doing my next Q&A session next Friday. So if you have any tech related questions that you would like that I post, Please post them in the comment section below and start it with the Q&A tab. I hope you found this video uh, helpful. That's it for now. This is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and hopefully I'm going to see you in my next video.